There is a better way. I thought some of the capital cuts to the Scottish budget were pretty drastic. Um, in my opinion, that would put Scottish jobs and Scottish families at risk. I think the Chancellor's cuts to the, the Scottish budget in particular, but also to benefits and some of the issues across um, the UK that are reserved matters that affect families, have got a chance of slipping Scotland back into a double dip reception, recession. I don't think um, you can cut your way out of recession, especially when the main impact is on the families um, and the middle income and the lower income families who are contributing to that economy. When you start to cut um, their ability to spend, you then cut the ability to recover. I think the stock excuse they've got that, oh, they may take their business overseas, I think is absolute rubbish. Um, I do believe that the banks could be hit harder. I know that he's put a permanent levy on the bank. I don't think it's big enough. I think it has to be bigger than that. When you've still got um, executives and banks getting five and six figure um, bonuses, that's wrong. There is a better way. An example, a young woman who's working 16 hours a week, earning the minimum wage, the government have, the coalition have agreed to set, give her a, an increase in her tax allowances of £1,000. That's great, it sounds, it sounds wonderful, but when you look at it, she'll, get, she'll not pay any tax of £200 a year, but she'll lose benefits of £170, giving her a net take of £30. VAT is going up in January. That £30 is going to disappear very quickly. There is a better way. Every day you pick up a newspaper, listen to the news or watch a politician speak, you'll be hearing the same message. Is we've got to have cuts in public spending because our economy is in a dire state. They never tell us who caused this economic problem. They never told us it was the free market and the banks that caused this economic crisis. People are almost being fed the lie now that public sector workers are causing the crisis. Well, that is not right. Public sector workers do a very important job every day providing vital services. Our campaign is about keeping people in work, keeping our members providing the services to UK residents the length and breadth of the country. If you support our aims, and if you agree with us that by collecting the £120 billion worth of tax that rich people avoid paying, or by stopping wasting money on private sector consultants, these are the ways that we should help with the deficit, then we hope you'll support PCS and the campaign that we are launching. There is a better way. I'm a fireman. You're a fireman? Yes. And basically in my job, uh, we don't have, we have very, very little uh, black ethnic minorities working within the brigades. Um, but the fact that I'm working there, that brings people, I've seen people that are interested now in the brigade because I am there. The current cuts in the public sector is going to affect our employees massively because by obviously cutting employees, we, our services that we give to our customers is going to suffer. We're already having issues with um, long waiting times um, and customer people are getting a lot and really annoyed. I'd like to see like the politicians get in to the like communities to get, I mean, feedback from like the youths firsthand, not getting like random surveys and saying, oh, that's the youth perspective it's engaging the youth like having workshops with them having like organizing like stuff with them doing different stuff with them getting feedback concerns and i mean about everything that's going on in society not just like surveys that doesn't speak in general about all oh, what the youth are feeling there is a better way there will be a significant knock-on effect. There will be major impact in terms of public se sector workers and the services, essential services which our members, along with other affiliate trade unions and organisations of the STUC, provide. And this will be, you know, mirrored across the whole of the UK. But in Scotland, in particular, we will see lots of very vulnerable people being exposed. It's unfair. It's unnecessary in terms of that. And also there will be there will be a major impact and we believe a knock on into the private sector who won't be able to regenerate the recovery that's expected to pick up these jobs. I think that's a fallacy, I think it's ill thought out and I think it's doomed to failure, unfortunately. So I think again from our perspective, I think these cuts being proposed by a government and a cabinet, you know, with twenty millionaires in it, who say we're all in this together, I think not. There is a better way.
Uh, people who work in construction just now are dependent on whatever the government do in terms of you know, procurement, giving out contracts. And what, happen, what will happen now, as we've seen uh, since 2007, is a downturn in construction work, uh, a downturn in contracts normally given out by the Scottish Government, as an example, uh, reducing, uh, and that's had an impact on public services and the private sector. There is a better way. But there's huge concerns for us because our members aren't just students, and I could go on to talk about how they're going to be impacted directly. They're also parents, they've got children, they're uh, workers, um, they're mature, they're young, they, they, they have people in school, and so these cuts will hit them in all sorts of ways, not just because they're students. Well, students have had the effects of the cuts almost trailed before the Comprehensive Spend Review today with the Brown Report, and the recommendations from that are just catastrophic. Uh, Brown has come out saying that we should lift the cap on tuition fees down south completely. Um, he suggested that access to loans and grants should be based on what your academic merit at school. We know for a fact that some people won't have the same opportunities as others. How can that be fair that to access education you have decent enough UCAS grades? Um, and we also know that any cuts down south, any reduction in public spending is obviously going to have less money going to the Scottish Parliament. So lots of different ways that students across the UK, but especially in Scotland, are going to be impacted. And of course we already have calls and things like the education maintenance allowance. The future of that is looking shaky as it is. And we know that's a lifeline for many students in our colleges up and down Scotland. Uh, I don't think I've got my head around the level of the impact that these cuts are going to have on our members. Um, but one thing's for sure, they're certainly not going to be positive. Well, students across Scotland have had to listen on with dismay as George Osborne goes on about the fact that we're all in this together. Well, are we heckers like George? You put yourself very much in your own league with these sort of recommendations. There is a better way. Well, our members very clearly have been affected. Over the last year, there are 2,000 less teachers uh, in Scotland, which clearly has a major impact on children. Uh, there's less subject choice in secondary schools, there are larger classes, but probably the most important thing is that learning support for our most vulnerable children um, in some schools isn't there any longer, um, and in lots of other schools there's little provision. When people who support these vulnerable children uh, are... are leaving, uh, they are not being replaced um, and we feel that not only are those children being hit in schools but their families are being hit by the cuts across the health service, by the threats to benefits um, and once again it is the most vulnerable in society um, that are suffering and I mean our individual campaign is why must our children pay? And, and I would say very clearly, why must our children pay for the mistakes of bankers? It is not the children's fault. There is a better way. The really big thing is that we have a huge well of knowledge and expertise in terms of people who are struggling with poverty day in and day out. And I think the big way to tackle those issues is by involving that group of people in the making of policy, the shaping of policy, and then the delivering of things. There is a better way. We feel that there is a better way is a great way of putting it together for all the trade unions and the general public of Scotland. And we, of course, want to be part of that because the coalition government are attacking our industry particularly. Royal Mail, they've said they want to privatise it, and we know what will happen if they privatise Royal Mail. Services will go down to pan. Um, the services that people expect, the universal service obligation, where you pay one price for a stamp to go anywhere in the UK, could be seriously attacked by any private company that takes over Royal Mail. And of course, the worst part of all is they propose to take Post Office Limited out of Royal Mail Group, which means that your local post office, once again, will be under threat. No matter what the condemns say, your post office will be under threat. There is a better way. There is a better way. Parents need jobs that will pay a living wage. They need affordable childcare uh, and extra free nursery hours to provide their children with decent early education. They need advice and information to ensure that they are getting the benefits and tax credits they're entitled to. What they don't need is these massive cuts to family benefits, to child benefits, to welfare. Um, if we're serious about eradicating child poverty, we need to see the wealthy pay a fairer contribution to cutting the cost of the deficit uh, and ensuring that it's not our poorest families yet again who are paying the price. There is a better way.